Hello everyone, this is John Buck, back for another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video today we're going to talk about how topics we started the semester with, talking about things like causality and stability of systems, actually connect to the region of convergence for our most recent topic, the Z-transform. So I think it's a really neat idea to see how these, I really need to see how these ideas from both ends of the semester tie back together and we get, get this connected uh, network within the class of concepts. Uh, and, and that we can use regions of convergence for LTI system as a way to tell us whether a system is causal or stable, or both. Uh, so let me uh, pause the video and move to the whiteboard, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so uh, tonight's video is about causality, stability, and the region of convergence, and how they connect. Uh, remember, in terms of, let's start with uh, the discussion of stability. We saw... Back at the start of the class, we said that if um, we have the sum of the absolute value of the impulse response over all time is finite, right? this was equivalent to saying the system is stable, or saying a, a, a LTI system is stable. But we've also seen uh, since then, we said, well, uh, if, I, if the sum of an absolute sequence is finite, it's also equivalent to saying the Fourier transform exists. Right, so that the Fourier transform sum converges, so we know that we, we have a, a Fourier transform for every stable system. And then We've also just seen that the Fourier transform is the Z-transform evaluated on the unit circle. So if the Fourier transform exists, this means that the region of convergence for H of Z includes the unit circle, right? That is the set of points where Z is equal to E to the J omega, because we know that if we replace Z by E to the J omega, we get the Fourier transform. So, if, so these things all turn out to be a big chain of equivalence, saying, proving any one of these things is true or showing any one of these things is true connects to all the others. So that I can look at the ROC uh, on a shaded graph of poles and zeros or look at it given as an equation and say if that ROC includes the unit circle, right, the, the set of points where z equals e to the j omega or equivalently, sometimes we write this as magnitude of z equals 1, that's enough to tell me the underlying LTI system is stable. So that's a really nice connection between all those properties. All right, so maybe to come back to a picture example like that, if this is my unit circle, a legend circle, it's not a very good circle there, with my real and imaginary axes, and maybe I have a, a pole here that's defining the radius to be outside that pole for the ROC. Right, so I say the ROC is coming outside whatever radius this is. And we would look at this and say, well, the shaded region includes the unit circle, and so the system is stable. So that's the short and sweet story about stability. Let's go on and talk about causality and how it connects to the region of convergence. Well, first we know that for a causal system, We have h of n is equal to 0 for negative time, for n less than 0, right? But we say, well, if, if I have an h of n that looks like that, maybe it's something that dies away, sort of drawing it in cartoon form like this. Right? If, if I have an h of n that looks like that, I would also say that's a right-sided sequence based on our discussion from last time, so we say this is, or from the from the uh, p uh, properties of what happened there. Properties of uh, regions of convergence. We would say this is a right-sided sequence, right? It turns on and then runs to the right, and so right-sided sequence means that the ROC is outside 
the largest finite pole. And that's one of those properties of the ROC we talked about in, in the, that video. You might want to go back and review that video if it's not at the tip of your tongue. Um, but that's, that's a, an important property when we're looking at the structure of a sequence in time. It helps us know what the ROC has to be, that it has to run outside. So that's partway there, but just saying ROC is outside the largest finite pole doesn't necessarily help us tell the difference between... So we could have a right-sided sequence like this that's right-sided, but not causal because it's starting in negative time. Or one that looks like this, right, that starts at zero and moves forward. So we would say, you know, if we look at these, they would say this one is causal, and this one's not causal. So there's one last piece of the puzzle to figure out when we look at an ROC, if the signal is if the system is causal or not. And that comes from looking at the sum. And I have the sum as n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity for the z transform of h of n, z to the minus n. Well, I can break, I'm going to break that up into three pieces, really. I'm going to say I'm going to have a sum over the terms where n is less than 0, uh, plus the term at 0, which is h of 0, z to the minus 0, which is just 1. And I'm going to have the sum for n greater than 0. Well, if the system is causal, right, h of, n will, this, h of n is 0 for this whole first sum, and it goes away. So if h of n is causal, if the system is causal, then the limit as z goes to infinity will have h of 0. And then as z goes to infinity, remember, these are all like 1 over z to the n. So as z is getting really big, these terms are vanishing. Right, that's sometimes called the initial value theorem. That as z goes to infinity, the limit of h of z will be h of 0. On the other hand, if, z is, if h of n is not causal, then some of the terms in this first sum are not 0. And so if I put in a negative value of n into z to the minus n, I'll have z to some positive power. I have terms that are like some h times a z to the m, where this will be positive. Right? Well, if, if n equals minus m, this will be positive. Which, and the limit of those, as z goes to infinity, will be infinite. Right? Z, as z goes to infinity, z to the m blows up. So if I have a system that's not causal, it must have a pole at z equals infinity. Well, how do you know if there's a pole at z equals infinity? My my page isn't big enough to draw the RS, you know, the pole zero plot all the way out to infinity. Well, this is where we come back to this important fact that the number of poles must equal the number of zeros. Right, this is always true for any rational system function. Right, where h of z can be written as a ratio of polynomials, that is a fraction of polynomials. So if there's a pole at infinity, it means, right, if there are more zeros than poles in the finite z plane, right, in the part I can see, in the, that means there must be poles at z equals infinity. Right? So in that case, uh, you know, as z goes to infinity, the whole thing blows up. So for instance, if I had an h of z that was like z minus a third z plus a half over z minus a quarter, right? as z goes to infinity, this one would blow up. Right? I have z squared in the numerator and only z in the denominator. This would have a pole at infinity. So non-causal systems, systems that are not causal, have poles at infinity. Or flipping that around the other way, we can say if the ROC 
goes outside the largest pole. So we have an RC that goes goes outside the largest pole and there is no pole at infinity. Then the system is causal. So again, most that's a pretty easy check. I look, I can just look at that pole up zero diagram and say when uh, the ROC is going outwards from the biggest pole, so it's not a circle coming in or not a donut, but go, going outwards, and uh, there's no pole at infinity. I count the poles and zeros, and there aren't any poles missing. I have an equal number in the plane, um, or I could have zeros at infinity. That's okay, but I can't have poles at infinity. Then the system is causal. And so putting those two pieces together gets us to the last important fact, which is uh, if the system is causal and stable, which are the systems we like to build, and we like to make things that can run in real time causally and make them be stable in a lot of applications, then we, then we have to have all the poles must be inside the unit circle. So the ROC going outwards includes the unit circle. Okay, so two, uh, two ideas where we connect, just to reiterate, connect ideas from early in the semester, basic properties of systems, looping back to connect to our, the last thing we've talked about, regions of convergence, and that is that for a stable system, the region of convergence must include the unit circle, or vice versa. If the region of convergence includes the unit circle, the system is stable. And then for causal systems, the ROC, the region of convergence, must go outwards from the largest pole, and there must, uh, and must include infinity. There must not be a pole at infinity. For both of those things to be true at once, that tells us I need all the poles inside the unit circle, and to have no pole, which means no poles at infinity as well. Okay, so that's all for this time. I will uh, see you at the next video.